Hi, I'm Dylan with Mastercam. Every shop that switches out setups knows the importance of building a library of standard work holding to speed up programming. With the release of Mastercam 2021, we've added some new tools in Milturn to allow for the use of custom solid models for Chucks and Jaws and for the newly added Collet support. Let's review them by building a work holding component library now. The first step in the process is to open a Milturn machine file in Code Expert. This machine file is a collection of all the different information that defines each aspect of our Milturn machine. Code Expert will open with the contents of the machine visible in the Machine Explorer panel. If you can't see the Machine Explorer panel, click the View tab on the ribbon and then click Machine Explorer in the Show Gallery. In the Machine Explorer, we can see that this machine file contains a host of different information, including an Applications Guide, Operation Defaults, and Component and Tool Libraries. I've got some solid models of the Chuck and Collet in my Mazak Integrex that I'd like to add as permanent custom components into the component library for this machine. Let's double click on the metric component library to launch a session of Mastercam with the mill turn component library. Within the component library, the components are organized by group. If we right click on the group dialog, we can turn the visibility of groups on and off to clean up the display. New to 2021 are the Call It Chuck and Call It groups. I'll make these visible for when we add components to those groups later. Let's start by adding a new Chuck. I'll right click on the Chucks group and select Add Chuck. In the Geometry dropdown, we now have the ability to bring in a solid entity for a Chuck. I'll click the Open icon and browse to the Chuck file. Within this file, I've modeled the entire chuck, including jaws and bolts. Here, we're defining just the chuck, so I'm going to click and choose just the chuck solid. Selection of an entity starts the align chuck function. A prompt will ask you to select a feature to begin aligning your chuck, and I'll select the chuck OD to do so. The Z leg of the gnomon can be moved along the center line of the component. This defines where the component will be mated to its parent component, in this case, the spindle nose. The x-axis of the gnomon should be pointing along a jaw channel in the chuck. This will become important later when we add jaw components to the library. Note that all components should be created and oriented as if they are mounted in the left spindle when defined in a component library. When we add them to spindle groups later, they'll take on the proper orientation for the position they're added to. I could reverse or reposition the gnomon on the chuck if I had to, but this result looks good, so I'll click OK to finish up. On the Geometry tab of the chuck definition, we're now automatically generating an active preview of the chuck that we can manipulate. In the Configuration group, we'll add important information like the number of jaws. Notice that Mastercam automatically picked up the chuck OD, ID, and thickness from the solid body. We're done defining the chuck for now, so I'll click OK to finish up. Next, we'll add the chuck jaws from our model as jaw components. In the chuck jaw definition dialog, I'll again choose solid entity from the geometry dropdown, and I'll open the complete chuck model. I'll click on one of the jaws, which will begin the jaw component alignment. I'm prompted to select a chuck jaw mating face to define how it will attach to the chuck, so I'll click on the back face of the jaw. Now, we can use the 3D gnomon to finish up with the jaw alignment. We need to position the jaw in the XY plane, where Y positive represents the OD and Y negative represents the ID of the jaw alignment. Once I finish up the alignment, I'll click OK. We can rename the component to something like Hard Jaws, and then we'll look in the Parameters tab at the reference point. In the preview window, this shows up as a red point, which represents the zero point for positioning stock relative to the jaws. The reference point is already in the correct location, but if we needed to change it, we could do so by clicking the Reference Point button and selecting a new location from this 2D preview of the jaw that we get in the graphics window. 
Now that we have the Chuck and Jaws added in, we'll set up Call It components in a similar manner. I'll right click on the Call It Chuck group and click Add Call It Chuck. In the dialog, I'll choose Solid Entity and navigate out to my part file containing the Call It Chuck assembly. As before, I'll click the chuck body to define it as a chuck and choose a mating face for spindle head connection, then click OK to finish. If we go to the Parameters tab, note that we have a few different ways of defining a collet mounting position on this chuck. For this example, I'll leave the position set to Chuck Face. The last component to add is the collet itself. I'll right click on the collet group, select Add Collet, and then open my collet assembly file. This time, I'll select the collet body. When defining the collet origin in this step, we need to remember that this position will be relative to the mating origin option we set in the chuck component, which was defined as chuck face. To realistically place this collet in the chuck, we'll drag the origin position to the nose of the collet and then back the origin off slightly to represent the collet protruding from the chuck nose. Next, we'll go to the Parameters tab and look at the Collet Reference Point. As with the chuck jaw, this will be the zero point that stock is positioned relative to when we use this component in the machine. Here, the point in the preview is already on the nose of the collet, so no further adjustment is necessary. Now that we have all our custom components defined in the library, we can set them up as the default components that will be used whenever we utilize this machine in a file. First, we'll delete the current default chucks and components by right-clicking on each and choosing Delete Component and Children. Next, we'll drag the chuck into our left spindle and then drag our hard jaws onto the chuck. For the right spindle, we'll drag down the collet chuck, then drag the collet onto the chuck. If we want to ensure we defined all our components correctly, we can right click on the collet in the default components pane and choose View Component and Parent. That looks great, so I'll finish up with the component library and then click Save in Code Expert to save my machine component changes into the machine file I was editing. With the addition of custom solid components and collet support in Mastercam 2021, we can now easily build work holding libraries to ensure that our programming and simulation in Milturn exactly matches what's mounted in our machine.